The natives call this unspoiled country Iliamna, which means mother of the wind. Hi, I'm Bill Cullerton, and this fish I'm landing belongs to lure manufacturer Ron Weber. It's a huge sockeye salmon. This chap with the rainbow on, his line is professional fly fishing. He's Leon Chandler. We all have heard the tales of the fantastic trout fishing. So when Dick Jodine, owner of Iliamna Lake Lodge, invited us to Alaska, we all happily accept it. Iliamna Lake, 250 miles southwest of Anchorage, is in the center of the Bristol Bay Trophy area. A few minutes in any direction from here would put us in trophy water. The only problem with fishing for trophies here, Dick said, are all the other fish to get in the way. We decided to work our way up to the tail of a rapids on the New Halen River. Motoring up into the rapids took us past this native village. These drying salmon will be the main food source for the village during the long, dark Alaskan winter. This air drying method dates back to the beginning of time. Alaska, true to its conservation pledge, designates certain waters as trophy. These waters abound with large fish of all species and protection in the form of limits, hook size, and number of hooks per lure is assurance of good fishing for generations to come. We originally had hoped to take the boat further up the rapids, but one look tells us the only way to get past this point is on foot. is to cast your lure into the current and let it tumble down as natural food might. It tumbles into the still eddy pools where the fish line up for feed. Ron gets honors for the first strike and the first fish derby money. This is where the light tackle and Ron's Nordic ancestry will take the test. Leon helps him land the first acrobatic rainbow. Leon can't wait to get rid of the net and get his line in. I just hope he's never forced into a choice between his wife and his fly rod. A nice trout for most fishermen, but small by Alaskan standards, it will soon turn out. Fishing with a fly rod in heavy water like this is packed with risks, and Leon likes it this way. Whoops! <laughs> Looks like he was a little overmatched there. Probably one of the big sockeye salmon gathering below to shoot the rapids on their way upstream to spawn. Something out there hits my streamer, and is it heavy? There, a flash of red. It's a sockeye. I remember what happened to Leon, so I coax my fish out of the hard current into this still pool where he can't use the force of the rush water to break off.
look at the brilliant color. Normally this fish would be a sleek silver, but now he's preparing to spawn. As soon as the red color covers its entire body from tail to snout, the fish will spawn. Then, like all, find his way to fish heaven. Leon doesn't have time to admire my salmon. The end of his line is taking all of his attention. This happy guy who's fished all over the world is fighting his first Arctic grayling. Partial to flies and found almost exclusively in the cold water of the north, the grayling uses his sailfish-like fin to exert tremendous strength and agility when hooked. Combine these traits with the superb beauty of this species and you understand why this north country cousin is a true trophy. I suppose we could help Ron with a net, but Leon and I are having too much fun just watching it. Look at that nice rainbow. Watching Ron hook and land his fish prompts Leon to put down his beloved fly rod and start spin casting. Just to see how you guys on the wrong side of the tracks live, he says. Two casts and he has one. Another slashing, fighting rainbow. By the look on his face, I had the feeling it wouldn't take much coaxing to get Leon to visit our side of the tracks at least one more time. The beauty of this rapids kept drawing me further upstream. You could walk for weeks here and never see another human. We are so remote that only a few of the sport fishermen living permanently in Alaska have ever been here. Talk about Alaskan fishing. Here's some I hadn't planned on running into. I've been through enough school to know better than disturb a brown during his lunch hour. These can brown bears will weigh on the average of 800 to 1,000 pounds. Well, I've seen them walk upstream on their hind legs against a raging current that's neck deep. One's got my scent. Bye-bye. My bear stories remind Ron he was hungry enough to eat one. And we agreed it was about time to get going on a fresh rainbow trout lunch. Although we'd released most of our catch, we saved a couple of the smaller ones. Ron showed us his favorite way to prepare the fish, a method used for centuries by Indians and North Country trappers. He cut them into steaks. Leon's always teaching. Today I learned to tie the nail knot, the knot that connects the line to the leader. 
Iliamna is native for mother of the wind, and naturally the wind changes the weather ten times a day. And now we're undergoing another change, a chilly drizzle. We're at the mouth of the New Halen River now, where it empties into Lake Iliamna. First and the fun starts. Leon gently frees some feed from the rainbow's gullet, and we knew right from the start what type of lures to use. Ron chooses a small pixie spoon designed to flash like a mill with a bright red insert to add tremendous visibility. I chose a Rappola with the same basic color. Ron and I are both into fish on our first cast. I'm fishing with a spin casting reel and four pound mono line on a short fly rod. It's a new idea catching on fast. Not only does it let you throw the small light lures a long, long way, but you get a super thrill playing a fish on this light tackle. As in the rapids, the trick here is to let your lure flutter as naturally as possible. Ron's fish is another sparkling rainbow. And mine, a Dolly Varden. Another member of the trout family, the Dolly Varden is distinguished from the rainbow by its stouter body and larger color dots. These trout descended from a mother who did a high wire act and a father who was raised on a trapeze. me, this is more fun than being the honored guest at a trout farm. In another hour and a half at this spot, Ron, Leon, and I caught and released 68 trout, all from 18 to 24 inches. Of course, some we didn't have to release.
Leon suggested we return to the lodge and get ready for the next leg of our trip. Leon supervises the native helpers loading the van for the trip to the airport. We decided to try the Iliamna River, which is about 30 minutes by float plane. There are two things that are absolutely essential to any successful fishing trip in Alaska. A good float plane and a dependable outboard. As we circle over the lodge and head for the river, I think the world still was to own unpolluted wilderness such as this. But I also think with a little sadness that only we and a small handful of humanity have been fortunate enough to see how things were before man turned his hand to upsetting nature and its God-given beauty. There's no doubt that those who live in this rugged wilderness in spite of their hardships are much richer than we My only hope is to remember what I am seeing now in a strong way and be effective in telling others about the importance of preserving it. The plane dropped us off at Don Knighton's camp at the mouth of the Iliama River. We started upriver to fish in one of his boats. The Iliamna is fed by a multitude of glacial streams flowing down from these mountains. In spots, the glacial wall comes right up to the riverbank. The water here seldom goes above 40 degrees. The river narrows, so we watch for deep pools. The water is so clear here, we can see the bottom in 10 to 20 feet and virtually spot the fish we'd like to take. We find a pool, and Ron is so excited about a big fish he sees there, his line is in the water before the boat stops. The first fish bed is on again, and Ron's so anxious to collect, he tried to horse this rainbow just a little too fast, and bang, there goes the fish and Ron's bet. Leon's back to wet flies, and a tremendous battle on his light tackle produces our first Arctic char, a second cousin of the rainbow. A beautiful fish, and another first for Leon's fishing experience, plus the bet proceeds that Ron had just tossed away. Ron's a good sport, though, at least he pretends to be, and goes back to his own fishing. Another strike, and a Dolly Varden becomes the star. Quickly and gently, Ron returns his prize. Now it's my turn. And Ron sets his hook at almost the same time. For a while, this double feature looks like it might cause havoc. But nimble, nifty Ron maneuvers his fish away from mine. The results of the double bout are a pair of Arctic char. After tearing up this pool for 15 or 20 minutes, 
these fish got a little gun shy. So we decided to pull up anchor and move up the river and find another hole. We passed over a big school of sockeye salmon on their way up to spawn. Leanne discovered the current sometimes is a little stronger than it looks and that you can get fooled by the depth of this clear water. His splashing sent this brood of ducks skittering for safety. Storing loose line is the biggest challenge for a stream fly fisherman. Leanne sure makes it look easy. He coils the line with a simple figure eight movement over his fingers. Perfect storage and a smooth feed out on the cast. A strike. Leon yells to us, this feels like the big one. We pull on our lines and watch Leon. He deftly handled this light tackle against a dark fighting hulk underneath the water. What a rainbow, a good 28 inches. Any fisherman would be delighted to take a fish like this on any tackle. But for a fly fisherman, it's a dream come true. My first of the day with a dry fly pays off with a tremendous strike. This stream, according to Don Knighton, had never been fished with flies. How's this for a lunker arctic char? To me, one of the most beautiful and hardest hitting fish I've ever caught. Now Ron's got the fly fever and back running. Ron's careful with his light tackle, and when the time's right, I jump in to help with the net. Oh man, look at the size and beauty of this charm. 31 inches, maybe 12 to 15 pounds. To me, a fish like this transcends the beauty of the whole world and vividly illustrates what Mother Nature will give us if we'll give her our protection in return. The Alaskan fishing tales we had heard were all true and then some. We saw untamed rivers, Trout who belonged in an aerial circus and had lunch with a brown bear. All with the compliments of Iliam, mother of the wind.